Okay, so now you've played through the A Mixolydian mode, uh, we're going to use it to play over the one chord of the blues. And as I was saying in the last lesson, you know, this, this sort of harkens back to when we used the major pentatonic to play over the one chord of the blues at the beginning of the course. Now this time we're in the key of A, so your major pentatonic. <laughs> and your mixolydian adds the fourth and the seven, or flat seven. And remember when we did the A7 arpeggios, right? So that's really all the information you need to be able to create some interesting lines here. What's the difference between using major pentatonic or the arpeggios? Good question. Well, the major pentatonic has that very uh, melodic Freddie King kind of sound to it, right? The arpeggio is a little bit more spelt out. The mixolydian is a combination of both because you can now have those chord tones you had from the major pentatonic, but you're also getting the flat seven, which is very important because it's one of the two chord tones that define the, the dominant seventh chord. So what you want to do is still think about the arpeggio, still kind of think about where those chord tones are, but you can use the mixolydian mode to fill between the gaps, you know, and to, and to make your phrases a little bit longer, have a little bit more expression to them. So let's give you a couple of examples of what I might do uh, over, over the, the A7 chord, the one chord, right? We're going to leave space on the four chord, and I'll, I'll uh, talk about that in the next lesson, what we're going to do with that. But so a typical mixolydian lick might be like that, just kind of walking up the scale from the third. Something like that, maybe coming down the scale. Maybe playing in the low register, you know. But I'm still really making a point of emphasizing third root, flat seven. Really want those chord tones to be coming out. I don't want it to sound like the A7 chord comes around and I go, oh, I've got a scale because that doesn't sound much like blues phrasing or frankly any phrasing, right? So you, even though you've got this nice seven note scale now to use, just be aware of rhythm, leaving space. You know, it doesn't, you don't need a lot of notes from the scale necessarily, you just want the notes to count. So be aware of the chord tones, be aware of the space. So let's make up an example solo. So maybe I'll just do something very simple like, there's my one chord, then the four chord comes along and I ignore it. Then I go back to the one chord, I repeat that initial phrase, maybe add some more mixolydian on the way down. See that? Those are notes we couldn't use before, but now we have mixolydian. Finishing on the seven to lock me into the chord. Now I'm going to ignore that four chord again. There's our D7. And then back to the one chord. So now I'll go back to my initial phrase. Five chord, four chord. Now something a little longer. So that's overlapping the mixolydian a little bit. What did I play there? <laughs> Not sure. Let's see. So descending. Something like that. So I'm coming down the scale. Then I go back a note. And then back a note. You know, and overlapping scales like that is a great way to make a line or a lick seem longer than it really is, right? I remember as a kid listening to a lot of hard rock players and they would have these runs like that. And I would go, what scale is that? I don't understand. My scale's only got seven notes. Theirs seems to go on for much longer. And then I figured out the... It's just overlapping it. You can do it in threes. You can do it in fours. You know, you don't want to do too much of it because it sounds like an exercise, but if you make it rhythmic, it can be kind of cool, you know, so keep that in mind, overlapping your scales. But anyway, so my run at the end there on the A chord might be something like, 
And that's it. That's once through the form of the 12 bar, you know? Um, again, you want to go to different spots on the neck and do this, and we're actually going to do that uh, in an upcoming lesson. So let's stick in the fifth position, and let's go to the practice session, and I'll, I'll solo over the A7 chord and leave space on the D7 chord, and then I want you to try it, okay? 